happy Feast of Trumpets. I hope you did join us online. If you didn't, go to Faithful Galileans. Check out the Feast of Trumpets. Um, but what do you think about this? I I'm not there in the world. I want to hear your comments. Is the world condemning Iran for launching 180 plus, well, they said 400, ballistic, intercontinental ballistic missiles on 10 million civilians here in the one democratic country in the whole Middle East? And uh, of course, we're going to have to exact a heavy price, as Netanyahu quote said, our prime minister. We can't just let that, them get away with that. What are they saying in the world? Are they, are they with us? Are they not? Uh, do you stand with Israel? Please at least comment and say, I stand with Israel. The IRGC, the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, is a terrorist organization. And I took some time. We lit some candles like you do on, on the Feast of Trumpets. And I lit these candles... And I just, and I remembered each of those uh, brave soldiers whose life was snatched away in Lebanon, southern Lebanon. I remember when I was in there, 2006, going through the landmines. And I just want to say their names. You know, um, Itzhak Oster. He's 22 years old. Young, uh, amazing guy. Team commander from Modi'in, Harel Ettinger. Their lives were snatched away. Um, Sergeant First Class Noam Barzilai from Kohav Yair, Sergeant First Class Or Mansur from Beit Arie, Sergeant First Class Natsar Itkin from Kiret Arie, and Captain Itai Ariel Giat from Yahalom, from my unit. And I, I lit those candles and I just said, may God comfort the families that are mourning and I hope that you'll just take this time to remember them. And in the a second firefight, you had two, two soldiers from the Golani Brigade that were killed as well, Sergeant, uh, Elemeken Teref, he's from Ethiopia, he made Aliyah from Ethiopia, and he has to serve to defend the country, living in Jerusalem. And Staff Sergeant Ido Boyer, 21 years old from Nesiona. That's near Rehovah, that's near where my family, where my uh, family lives. And so, you know, several air bases were attacked. I remember I saw those missiles coming right at me. I was thinking I could die. Uh, everyone was diving for cover. People were saying all these th unsubstantiated things. Uh, the soldiers were saying they saw the gas rigs on fire near Ashkelon, up near Haifa. Of course, there was the, the uh, gunmen all through Tel Aviv killing, what is it, eight people in cold blood? And um, missiles falling out of the sky. And uh, someone said they took over a floor of a hotel in Herzliya, the, the terrorists. And a lot of these things, you know, you just got to keep your calm. Don't believe everything you hear right away. Wait and check if it's substantiated. Don't just share false information. One of the reasons why I do these videos is I want people to know from boots on the ground what's going on. Yeah. And so I haven't been called up to serve in Lebanon just yet, but they're saying it could very well be soon. In a security cabinet meeting overnight into Wednesday, Netanyahu said that Iran made a giant mistake yesterday. Giant mistake. And we are going to attack them. Uh, many sources believe that it will be their nuclear facility, maybe their gas, oil facilities. And the uh, United States says they have our back, that they're standing with us. Biden says, uh, make no mistake, the United States is fully, 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 he said, supportive of Israel. Three times he said that. Fully, fully, fully. Uh, Pentagon says that it's time. I mean, they don't want... A war, but they know that you can't just put your head in the sand. You can't be an ostrich and put your head in the sand. It won't go away. You have to defeat terror or else it'll just sweep across the free world. Uh, I love seeing the UK Prime Minister, uh, Keir, the new one, Starmer. He said, UK stands with Israel and recognizes our right. We must defend ourselves. He calls up Netanyahu and he says, defend yourself. See this through. German Chancellor uh, Olaf Scholz, he says, you know, that Iran is the one igniting the whole region. People are seeing Iran for what it is. The warmongering Iran, training up terrorists, you know, and I just see these Hezbollah, these Houthis, these Hamas, Islamic Jihad, the Badr force in Iraq, many other forces in Tulkarim and Janine and uh, Kalkilia and so on, and <clears throat> Nablus, Shechem, throughout the West Bank, throughout Judea and Samaria, <clears throat> little by little, the dominoes are falling. Little by little, Iran is realizing no, you can't do it. But what I think, what we think, you got to get in some soldiers from the United States, Marines, Canada, French Foreign Legion, UK, and have them patrol the Litani River and say, Hezbollah, get back behind the Litani River. Do not come bring any more forces. You're going against Resolution 1701. You're not allowed to be uh, shooting missiles here for a year at innocent civilians here in Israel, shooting kids in playgrounds. You're not allowed to do that. The cycle of violence must end, and we must put it to an end. All flights in Iran are canceled. U.S. telling Iran to stop, to stand down. If they don't listen, 
They might try to call on China and Russia and North Korea to help them. But I'm telling you what, nobody wants a nuclear war. And I have to read this verse to you. I got to read it because it's we, we declared this yesterday. We declared this today. Jeremiah 49 verse 34. The word of the Lord came to the prophet Jeremiah against Elam. That's Persia. That's Iran. In the reign of King Zedekiah, the king of Judah. And he said, thus says the Lord of hosts, I will break the bow of Elam the chief of their might, that's break their strength. And upon Elam, I will bring the four winds from the four corners of heaven and I will scatter them to the four winds. You know, those very winds that scattered us, the Jewish people. But he says, I will cause Elam to be dismayed in front of their enemies. And before them that seek their life, I will bring evil upon them. Even my fierce anger, says the Lord, and I will send the sword after them till I've consumed them. And I will set my throne in Elam and I will destroy them. I will destroy from there the, their king and their princes. So there's a hope that God will set his throne in Elam. And it will come to pass in the latter day, he will bring again the captivity. He will return them and his throne will be there. So there's hope, but there's definitely a journey here that must happen.